you've got questions, we've got answers. No, I didn't say they were good answers, they're just basically answers. That, and I am Evo Terra, and this is the Books and Beer Hangout. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Books in Beer, your weekly delving into the dungeons of the indie publishing world. Tonight, in a very special episode of Books in Beer, we'll be taking your questions and, as Eva mentioned, coming up with some form of answers. My name is Jeff Moriarty with ePublish Unum, and let's get right to the beer. I have a Hot Box Imperial IPA this evening, and it's uh, quite tasty. I like the hot box. I'm having a Simtra Triple mm. IPA from Knee Deep Brewing, one of my favorites. And uh, since it's 100 and everything degrees outside, it seems to be quite appropriate and perfect. No guest on the program today. You'll see that it's just that guy and this guy. And things that you might have said to us uh, somewhere that said, hey, I got a question for you guys. We get that kind of stuff all the time. So we thought we'd spend our 15 minutes doing that. Uh, if you do have questions and you didn't get those to us ahead of time, that's perfectly fine. You, If you're watching this on Google+, Plus, um, in theory, and it's a theory, we'll be able to see the comments that you type into the actual viewing page here. If that is the uh, Hangout invitation you're watching from, you can leave a comment there. Uh, or if it's this live post that went out and you just discovered this, I think you can leave your comment there. <laughs> Maybe... Maybe we'll see them. Uh, no promises on that. And if you're not on Google+, and you're watching this on YouTube Live, Jeff is manning the stream over there. So again, theoretically, we'll be able to see questions. Ask us anything about publishing, digital, indie, all that kind of fun stuff. That's what we're here for, because we oftentimes uh, make up shit. And we'll do that again today. Jeff, do you want to take off on something? Are you all set up over there? I think I'm set up over here. I have my beer, so I'm quite set up. So let's see. Um, let's start with an easy one. Um, I had this one just today in email. Do I need an ISBN number for my ebook? Eva, what would be your take on that? Uh, do you need an ISBN number? No, need. Uh, you are not required to have an ISBN number for marketplaces such as Amazon.com. However, you are required to have an ISBN number for other marketplaces, uh, unlike Amazon.com, I believe, Apple Bookstore or iBookstore, as well as the Sony Store, which is part of Google Reader, requires you to have an ISBN number. So do you need to have one? Do you have to have one? No, but you probably should. Uh, in my opinion, I think ISBN numbers just make sense. They're not terribly expensive. Uh, even if you don't want to spend the 250 a pop, you buy them in bulk and they're cheaper. Uh, or you even can get some free ones. A lot of the services that are out there right now will give you an ISBN with that one. So uh, let's put it this way. Every book I'm going to publish from here on out, I'm going to have an ISBN number. And you, sir, are a genius because that is exactly the answer that I gave. I think in addition to the man the requirements by a couple of the marketplaces, it just adds a certain sense of legitimacy. Um, someone sees an ISBN, you know there's someone who's done their homework out there. So right. small, right. but all right. what do you want to tackle next? Well, let's go with this question about length. I always love to answer the length question, regardless Here of what we go. in regards to whether it is uh, publishing related or perhaps double entendres. <clears throat> But we did get the question that was simple, and it comes in many forms, but this time it was, how long should my book be? So, Jeff, I'll let you take a crack at answering that question, since you know I could go on and on and on. Yeah, so my first part of the answer when someone asked me this was, uh, as long as it needs to be. Um, I know, really insightful, right? But, you know, I think more important than worrying about an exact length or trying to correlate that to the price is getting what you want in the book in a way that the readers are going to appreciate. I think shorter books are more acceptable now. You know, books of 10,000 words, 12,000 words that you can get for 99 cents. If you saw that in a bookstore, it would look like a pamphlet. You probably wouldn't pay for it, but people snap those things up. So I don't think there's a minimum length. I think you probably get into thinner ice when you go below 10,000 words, um, but I don't have any recommendation beyond that. How about you? 
Yeah, the only caveat I put with that is it depends on what you're trying to do. If you're writing a novel and you want to write a 10,000 word novel, that's not a novel. That's called a short story. Uh, so just make sure that you are not falsely representing that which you have done. For nonfiction work, I definitely recommend keeping it as short and sweet. Even for fiction work, you know, the shorter is better. Shorter means you spend some time editing and, you, and you've got it down. So uh, yes, keep it as short as you possibly can. I don't make it a single word longer. Please. Yep, completely agree. All right. Uh, here's one that I had last week. Which marketplaces do you recommend I upload my ebook in? Um, what would you say? My response is all of them. Well, and and the the easiest response to that is very similar to that. It's put your book for sale where people are buying books. You know, I mean, it's, it's it sounds rather obvious, but that's been something that has plagued indie authors. That's not plaguing them any longer. That's something that's new thanks to the explosion of indie publishing and ebooks you can now do the work to put your book kind of anywhere uh, that you want to but if I had to make some hard recommendations it would it would definitely be Amazon put a little asterisk there I want to come back to that for just a moment on an, on an author I'm working with right now so okay. Amazon definitely um, Barnes and Noble is still a place to go now that it's called uh, Nook however if you understand that Nook place or Nook whatever it is. Um, anyhow, their new Nook Marketplace would, would be a spot to go with. I still think Smashwords is a place that indie authors ought to be. I, I know many people who, for whatever reason, prefer to use Smashwords. These are readers I'm speaking of here who like to the, the discovery of new things on Smashwords. There's no reason to not put it on Smashwords now, that, especially that they can take an uploaded EPUB file as opposed to go through the meat grinder. Uh, and then Kobo so that you hit all the good Canadians, as well as a bunch of other foreign marketplaces where they've got much greater penetration. So I would do at least those. Okay, now hold up, hold up. I was going to stop you after your third choice because I thought it intriguing that you listed Smashwords ahead of the iBook store. And yeah. And you didn't even have that come in fourth. So... Why? I suppose yeah. you're asking, why not go to the iBook store? I'm shocked. Um, only because I haven't done it yet. Um, I haven't uploaded a book to the iBook store personally, nor have I uploaded a book to Google Store. They, those are available. They're out there. I probably should do that, um, but I haven't seen a lot. Look, back, back to your original commentary. Put it everywhere the book buyers are. If, if I know that people are out there looking for my stuff on the iBook store, I'm definitely going to put it there, and there's no reason to not. Oh, I had asterisked the yes. Amazon thing. The reason I've asterisked the Amazon thing, and a good plug for the Apple iBook store. Um, people don't recognize or, or don't realize that Amazon, if you take their fantastic royalty deal of 70%, which why wouldn't you? Price your book between $2.99 and $9.99, you get it for, you get 70% of whatever it sells for. Yes, but you also pay for bandwidth. Amazon charges currently for US sales 15 cents per megabit or byte. I always get those two things sort of whatever the I big think it's beast. I think so too. So if you have a book that is two or three megabytes in size, you probably shouldn't have one that big. But if you do, you're going to pay thirty-three, sixty-six, or ninety. You know, you're going to pay a buck or so um, extra to to get that thing down. So the author I'm working with right now has a very large picture book that he's working with, and has these fantastic high-resolution images, and is now contemplating not putting it on Amazon because of the file size limitation. However, iBooks, Apple, doesn't have such a limitation on bandwidth, and so he may be winding up using that as his primary marketplace. And the other one for the asterisk, as we didn't talk about, is sell it on your own. Sell it on your own site outside of a marketplace. Don't make that your primary because people, <laughs> this will shock you, are idiots and can't figure out how to sideload books on their devices. But I would say if you have the means to do it either through Gumshoe or Gang Gangsy, I can barely pronounce that term, where you can actually sell an ebook version, give it to someone, you're not paying anything other than like a few ten points maybe to the service provider for the for the uh, delivery of that. It's a much cheaper deal to go with. So long answer, but there you go. Gangsy, huh? I misheard that at first and thought this was about to go to a dark place. No. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Moving on. My turn. To ask oh, you a question that I got. Oh, Lord. Or maybe you gave it to me. So here's a tip 
um, when you have poor handwriting type. Let's see what I can do. Um, yes, this question is, what is the key to continuing to sell books? How do you keep up book sales, Jeff? You have to keep people talking about you. Having one book out and being done and resting on your laurels isn't going to happen. You need to be pushing your next books. You need to be doing other things, blogging, participating online, on Google+, Plus, on Facebook, wherever your, your readers are, and drawing new people to your books. Get, keep the word out there. Um, people who seem to think they're going to get one book and just rest on uh, a lifetime of sales really have a rough shot coming. I mean, you can't. I guess you can play, pay for advertising, and you know, you know, I, whether it's traditional and print or going on to Google or Facebook ads. But I rarely, I think once, I've actually recommended that to someone as a primary way to get their name out there. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of the same way with that. You know, um, I I'm a firm believer that once you start contemplate putting a book on life support and advertising is, is life support, or when you see sales finally take that big dip down and, and you start asking that question, of, oh my God, what do I get her to get those sales back up? The very first answer is go write something else mm -hmm. and then publish that because it's been proven time and time again that having an extensive back catalog is quite helpful. You will actually get more book sales when you're um, of your older titles when you have something new come out. There's almost always an, an increase with that. So best thing to do, write and publish something new and yeah. I think if you're serious about being an author, you need to have a roadmap that goes beyond your current book. If it shows you, you know, here your your first book is coming out, as your marketing ramps up for that, you know, what are you going to start talking about? When do you stop talking about your first book and start talking about your second book? And what work are you doing in the meantime to keep you top of mind. Right. If all you do is think about, you know, writing and you don't plan ahead for those gaps between your releases, you're going to lose the momentum. So. They will. You know, and the other part of that is we're saying the words and we're, we're both using the wrong terminology. It's, it's different than what we teach people and it's that you don't market your book, you market yourself because that's a much easier thing to really talk about. So if you find your book sales declining, it could be that you need a new book out, or it could be that you've been talking about, I've got a book, I've got a book, I've got a book so much, you forgot that you're the interesting thing and people would want to read your stuff. So maybe it's a shift in tactics and start talking about you and make sure you're sharing that kind of stuff. And then casually dropping into the conversation, here's a link where you can buy my fantastic stuff. I would agree with that wholeheartedly. I had one more question come in here, and I am. Uh, how do you get famous people to read your book? Oh, sorry. Famous people to read your book? Yeah, how do you get your book in front of somebody with a whole lot of followers and a big bag of swag who's going to read it, talk about it, you're going to sell a billion copies. Right. Okay, so step one. Write a fantastic and remarkable book. <laughs> there's, there's, you can't get beyond that particular, uh, that, that step. It's, you, there's no short coming that. But after that, it gets kind of weird. I mean, I'm not a famous and crazy person, but I get requests all the time. Would you like my book? Um, I have a stack of books. Now it's a stack of virtual books, you know, lined up in my, my Kindle. But nonetheless, it's still a stack of books that I can't get to. There is no shortage of information and new books for me to read. So somebody who's great, big, and famous doesn't have that problem either. Your best bet is figure out why that person should read it. So if you're going to go after some celebrity, you want to stalk that person for a while. You want to establish a relationship and a friendship and, and try and comment and try and just be on and involved. And then many, many, many months later, when you finally got that person figured out, you know that one thing that makes him or her tick and your book scratches that itch. I think I just mix a lot of metaphors there. Then you can pounce with this, hey, here's what I've done, but there is no shortcut to getting a, a celebrity to read your stuff when they don't know who the hell you are. Forget about it. Go write another book. I agree with that, but personally, I'd have started out with, don't freaking worry about it. I mean, <laughs> really, trying to get somebody of some notoriety to read your book, 
even if they do and they love it, who's going to say their followers are going to connect or it's going to get you that much of a bump. It's like getting a popular post on your blog at Reddit or something. You get a yeah. tiny little bump and then it goes on and it's not worth the headaches. You're chasing yeah. the wrong fish. Yeah, exactly right. I should have led with that and you're perfectly right. Cool. Well, hey, looky there. 15 minutes. Just like that. Wasn't that fun? We should do this more often. Delight. Actually, I did kind of like this, so yes. Yeah, yeah, so did I. So let's wrap this. This is the recorded session, and so we'll kill that one. For those of you that are watching live, we'll keep talking. But for now, we'll wrap this one up and call it good. Hey, a couple of news announcements before we walk away from you here. Um, so Jeff and I are both racing to the finish line, um, and I'm probably going to finish first only because of vacation schedules. But my latest book in the Modern Indie Author Guide collection, which is called Making Killer Google Plus Profiles, a modern indie author's guide, should be live in all the marketplaces we just mentioned, and maybe even those that I said I didn't do, on July the 15th. Right after that, I'm going to say a week or so after that, Jeff's book, which is called... Creating Fabulous Facebook Pages. Yes, creating fabulous. the Creating Fabulous Facebook Pages, also a modern indie author's guide, will be out right shortly after that. So we will have three books out in the Modern Indie Author's Guide series, and we are all terribly excited about that stuff. So that's what you can do right away. Uh, teaching a class this week at Changing Hands Bookstore in Tempe, and then the final one in two weeks after that. So check that out uh, at the website at e publishunum.com. Speaking of that, the Books and Beer Hangout is a production of ePublishUnum. We create workshops, guidebooks, and roadmaps to help indie authors cut through the complexity of indie publishing. Want more info? Or does that just sound really cool? We think so too. Check it out, ePublishUnum.com. For Jeff Moriarty, I'm Evo Terra. Thanks for watching.